Welcome to our service this evening. This is Monday, Thursday. We remember the Last Supper, and especially that this was when the Lord gave us the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. Our opening hymn is, O Lord, we praise you. Please stand for confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy.
Heavenly Father has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. You may be seated. For our gospel reading, we read Matthew's account of that Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him the teacher says, my time is near. I will observe the Passover with my disciples at your house. The disciples did as Jesus commanded them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. As they were eating, he said, Amen, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He replied, The one who dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going just as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, replied, Surely not I, Rabbi. He said to him, Yes, you are the one. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. He said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We sing, "'Twas on that dark, that doleful night."
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You recall from your catechism instruction that four times the Lord's institution of the Lord's Supper has been recorded for us in the scripture. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then St. Paul in 1 Corinthians. We read Matthew. Now we'll read an excerpt from Mark. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. When he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. They all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is poured out for many. Amen, I tell you, I will certainly not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. We bow our heads to pray. Lord, consecrate us for your service through the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Take, eat. This is my body. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Sometimes people say there, there just aren't any miracles anymore. Christians certainly couldn't more. God is certainly every bit as powerful now as he ever has been. And we see a miracle. Every time we come to the Lord's Supper, every time that the Lord gives us the body and blood of Jesus to assure us of our forgiveness. And so tonight we want to take a look at the this thought, we learn from the Lamb that his blood gives life. It goes back to the Passover celebration about 1,500 years before the Last Supper. You'll recall that the children of Israel had been in Egypt for over 400 years already. It had started out good, but then it had really gone bad. They had been turned into slaves. Now the Lord said it's time people to leave Egypt and return home. But Pharaoh let him go. And so the Lord had to convince him. The Bible tells us he convinced Pharaoh by a series of ten plagues. The last one would be the, first, the death of the firstborn in each home. Except, except for those who put their trust in the Lord and had a festive meal but as part of that festive meal, took the blood from the lamb and painted it around the doorpost, around the door of their house. For those homes, when the angel of death went out, he would pass over that home, and those inside would be spared. They would be spared because of the blood of an innocent lamb. And then the Lord gave the command that every year they should celebrate the Passover. And remember how they had been spared, how they had been set free by the blood of the Lamb. And now it was Passover time again. Probably Passover 29 AD. It was Passover time and Jesus was going to eat the Passover with his disciples. Now that picture that for 1,500 years the people had been reacting Reenacting that picture was now to be fulfilled. The perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, that by his blood we would receive forgiveness. By his blood we would receive eternal life. And it's appropriate that since it's a new covenant, a covenant of forgiveness, there should be a new festive meal. No longer the Passover meal of the Old Testament, but rather Jesus says, take and eat. This is my body. And he took the cup, passed it around to them, saying, drink some. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so with these words, the Lord gave us the Lord's Supper. And notice... The key words, this is the new covenant in my blood. 
The old covenant was the law, the law that God had given through Moses, the law that was full of details. And God had said simply, keep the law perfectly, and you will receive salvation. Keep the law perfectly, and you will remain my people. Only problem, nobody could keep that law perfectly. They all fell short. And so there would need, was need for a new covenant. The old covenant was two-sided. God said he would bless the people, but they in turn would have to obey him. But they couldn't do that perfectly. The new covenant would be unilateral, one side. God would put the blessings there, and God would do what was necessary for those blessings. It was God who would give forgiveness. The Bible is very clear what that new covenant entailed. The Bible says, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. It was a covenant of forgiveness because of the blood of a lamb, that perfect lamb of God. Christ was the one who poured out his body and blood for us and then gives us that body and blood in the miracle of the Lord's Supper to assure us of our forgiveness. How can that be? How can the body and blood of Jesus be given to us and tonight on Monday, Thursday to millions of Christians all around the world? How is that possible? The answer is, we don't explain it. God said it, Christ said it, and we believe it. All your instructions, catechism class, sermons you've heard, I can explain to you how that happens. God said it, and we believe it. In the famous scene with Martin Luther at the time when he met with Stanley, he simply wrote, his is is. His means is. And Christ says, this is my body. This is my blood. He tells us in the time we come. It's a personal one-on-one -on -one encounter with our God. He tells us, your sins are forgiven. Here's my body. Here's my blood. What I poured out for you for your forgiveness. We confess in our catechism, the Lord's Supper is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, together with the bread and wine. We also speak about it being in, with, and under. That the body and blood of Jesus is in, with, and under that bread and wine. It's there as a personal insurance of our forgiveness. And what are we supposed to do with it? Well, we heard what Jesus said. It's pretty simple. He said, do it. Simply reenact what he has done for us in that sacrament. Do this, he says, in remembrance of me. The scripture also gives other instructions. It says part of doing it is self-examination. Part of doing it, the scripture says, is let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Examine ourselves to see that we come in repentance and faith. Basically, we ask ourselves three questions. Do I recognize that I'm a sinner? Do I believe that Jesus Christ gives me Do I recognize that through this sacrament he is assuring me of my forgiveness? The Bible speaks of rich blessings in the sacrament. It's not any new forgiveness. You already have it. 
You had that forgiveness when you were baptized. When you were baptized, God said, I wash away all your sins. Baptism covers our entire life. All the sins of our lifetime have already been washed when we were baptized. You already have that forgiveness when you read the Bible. And see, the Bible's promise, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. You already have that forgiveness in the absolution, like when the pastor assures you of your forgiveness. That absolution, at least at Almost every Sunday, as we confess our sins, the pastor assures us of our forgiveness. It's not a new forgiveness that we get in the Lord's Supper. It's just another way that the Lord assures us. It's another way that he comes to us to say, your sins are forgiven. And here, at the altar, at the communion room, we have that one-on-one -on -one encounter as he comes to each one of us with that body and blood that he sacrificed for us, for our personal assurance of forgiveness. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. The Lord's Supper is kind of like a foretaste, an appetizer. An appetizer of when someday we'll be able to sit down at the banquet with Jesus in heaven. There's another blessing that comes. It's the blessing of the oneness that we have through the sacrament. The scripture says, For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one body. Again, you remember from your catechism instruction, there are many different names that we could give. We could call it the sacrament of the altar. We can call it the Lord's Supper. We don't usually use the term, we could call it the Eucharist. But there's really one term that our church especially likes, Holy Communion. Communion, a union together. And when we use that term, Holy Communion, we're really thinking of three different special unions that take place. There's that union of us and our God as he comes to us with that personal assurance. There's the union of the bread and wine with the body and blood of Christ that are united there in the sacrament. But there's also that union with our fellow partakers. A union that says that we, as we stand or kneel at the altar, before the altar, that we are one in our faith and in our confession. We are one in our trust and belief that we are saved because of the blood of the Lamb. We are one because God has worked that saving faith in us. And in our synod, we even go one step further. We practice close communion, asking that those who have confessed that they share the faith that we teach, that that's their faith also. So as we come together before the Lord's altar at communion, we are standing there with the people with whom we have so much in common, probably more in common with than almost anybody else. People who share with us a belief that this is God's word. People who share with us that all a belief that all the teachings in this are true. People who believe in the inerrancy of the scripture, who confess that they believe in God as the creator of the universe. People who believe that Jesus is true God and true man. People who believe that because of that forgiveness, we will be spending eternity in heaven together. We have a special union as we come to the, al the altar together to receive the Lord's body and blood. We have joined together in a common confession to say that all of us together are putting our trust in Christ and putting our faith in what God has revealed to us through his word. We're talking about grace. Remember, grace is God's undeserved love for us. I have a good Sunday school way to remember grace is 
to take the letters G-R-A-C-E and fill in. God's riches at Christ's expense. But you know, sometimes we are criticized. People who watch Lutherans receive and come down after they've received the body and blood of Christ say that they always look so, so somber. They look so, so serious when they're coming back from the Lord's Supper. It seems like we should have a big smile on our face, jumping for joy. But here's my explanation. I think we are awestruck. I think we are awestruck when we realize what has just happened. God has come to us personally to give us that body and blood that he sacrificed for our forgiveness. Come often. Amen. At this time, we will gather our offering. As part of the small catechism, which Dr. Martin Luther prepared, there's a series of questions to use in preparation for coming to the Lord's Supper. We're going to prepare ourselves that way now on page 7. What does God tell us about himself in his holy word? He says that I am a sinner and deserve only his punishment. What should I do if I am not aware of my sins or am not troubled by them? I should examine myself according to the Ten Commandments and ask how well I have carried out my responsibilities as a husband or wife or single person, as a parent or child, an employer or employee, a teacher or student. Have I loved God with all my heart gladly heard his word and patiently endured affliction? Have I been disobedient, proud, or uplifting? Have I been selfish, lazy, and world? Have I lied or disobeyed? Have I abused my body or permitted indecent thoughts to linger in my mind? Have I When I realize that I have sinned against God and deserve his punishment, what should I do? I will confess before God all my sins, those which I remember as well as those of which I am unaware. I will pray to God for his mercy and forgiveness. How do I receive this gracious forgiveness? His word assures me that Jesus led a pure and holy life for me and died on the cross for me to pay the full price for all my sins. Through faith in Jesus, I have been clothed with my Savior's perfect righteousness and holiness. What assurance do I have that Jesus is mine and I am his? In Holy Communion, he gives me his body and blood, together with the bread and wine, as a truly life-giving food and drink to unite me with him and with my fellow believers. By means of this sacrament, Jesus not only forgives my sins, but sweeps away all my doubts about his love for me, gives me his own strength to live a God-pleasing life, and grants me a joyful foretaste of heaven. How can I be sure 
that I receive all these blessings in the Lord's Supper. I have his own word spoken as his last will and testament on the night before he died. There he told me, take and eat, this is my drink, this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. How will I respond to this priceless gift from Jesus? I will daily thank and praise him for his love to me. With his help, I will fight temptation, do my best to correct whatever wrongs I have done, and serve him and those around me with love and good works. We pray. Lord Jesus, with joy and gratitude, I now come to your table to receive the precious food of your life-giving body and blood. May it strengthen me to remain in you as you remain in me, so that I bear much fruit in devoted service to you and in acts of kindness to others. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Come forward to receive the body and blood of the Lord. We pray. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the body and blood of your Son, given and shed for the remission of our sins. We ask that it strengthen our faith during our time on earth until we join the saints and angels to praise you in heaven. We pray that, united into one body in Christ, we may bear each other's burdens and live lives pleasing to you through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing, O Lord, blessed Lord, to thee. Mm -hmm. 